Welcome back to the big board, Hood Strikes North, Multiman Publishing. It's the Great Campaigns of the American Civil War series. Thought we'd take a quick look at the scenario wrap up, and you may wonder why am I, I stopping at the uh, the beginning of turn five? And I think it's because the scenario is uh, well and truly over, uh, from from what I understand of the game and the game system and the rules and everything like that. So this is a, a system that's not particularly uh, well ingrained in my <clears throat> my little mind here. So we're we're going to kind of talk through this a little bit. Might uh, might take a few minutes more than usual, but we'll we'll see how we do here. So uh, the situation starts out. It's it's kind of sort of a meeting engagement, but really it's it's a race to get back into uh, get the Union forces back towards Franklin and Nashville. Uh, a lot of ground to cover on a one d one d six movement rate plus you know plus one or two, depending on which commander is activating things. So we got to the beginning of turn five, and these guys, nobody ever got beyond fat three or fatigue level three. So this is about where they got to with a little bit of uh, messing around around here to try and slow down one side or the other. It kind of is what it is. Now, the, the way the victory conditions work, which is what has driven this end result, is that these wagon trains, there's three of them here, there's two here and there's one here, and then Stanley and Wagner are uh, supporting or covering this flank for them. They really need to get to uh, within three hexes of this spot here or be on the pike and, and be within a certain distance of Franklin, right? There's Franklin and there's Nashville all the way in the corner there. And so if they're, if they're within that range, they're going to get seven victory points for each of these wagon trains plus uh, Wagner and, and a bunch of other... Divisional HQ, divisional guys. That's right. Whitaker, Wood, Ruger, and Cox. If all of those guys, so Wood would count because he's one, two, three away. Uh, they they all would get seven VP. So it's going to be this pretty significant. Uh, what do we got? One, two, three, four, five. I mean, we can get nearly everybody there. So it's going to be a decisive or at least a substantive Union victory. And there's really not a lot that. Uh, that the, the Confederate forces can do here. They're, they're hampered by two things. One, uh, the terrain. And two, the fact that depending on how you roll in the uh, second turn and the third turn, it's going to determine when you get your reinforcements. So uh, the first turn I was eligible to roll, we got Lee on the board with, and he's not supposed to be that way, uh, with seven VP, uh, seven VPs, seven uh, strength points, and we raced him around here or through the Duck River Station and got him here to block the Pike and the rail line at the Rutherford Creek. And I thought, oh, that's pretty cool, <laughs> you know. Uh, so that'll slow him down because these guys were all trying to come up the road here. The Schofield's forces were coming up the road here and crossing over. They wanted to reinforce Columbia so it didn't fall in the first four turns to a confederate force and then they wanted to pass on through so this just forced the union to go around to the side here uh kind of you know southern flank and they went down the end of the creek here and uh, came, came came around uh had late rain a couple of times as well so that slowed things down for one side or the other and as with uh, uh often happens with the die roll initiative uh it's a 1d6 for each side it can be extremely disadvantageous if one side picks up the first half a dozen activations, for, for instance. And that's what happened here in turn four. Schofield did a, a leader activation, said, okay, everybody haul ass. And so they did that. Uh, we got wood across uh, here and post was here. And we, we and then a supplemental, a supplemental move to Poplar Grove here cut off Lee uh, from progressing further down towards Spring Hill and, and interfering with the victory condition opportunity. So he had no chance to go down there in the, in the uh, fourth turn because these guys moved to block. I, I, I could have or possibly should have, but I didn't get the activation early enough actually, now that I think about it, moved uh, Forrest and his cab from Cottage Home here to uh to further down the road and that might have strung out the strung out the union a little bit more and prevented them from being so uh, uh, sort of conclusively aggressive here and blocking my path because i I'm, I'm not taking on nine factors with 
seven factors and a couple of cav. I think there's four cav, three, yeah, there's two cav there. Now this is pretty weak, there's only two cav uh, strength points there. But, you know, that's a tough battle to try and haul on and uh, very difficult to, to conduct. And by the time we got to Lee and Lee's activation and forest, forest activation, we had late rain, slowed everything down, got some locking zones of control here, so it just kind of bogged bog the whole situation down. Now over here, uh, Hoop came on the map pretty quickly uh, in the third turn. We get to bring in the balance of the forces because of the die roll that, that occurred. They end up being a fatigue level three. That's as far as they got because they were also impacted by the heavy rain. Or was it a, uh, a one die roll? It might have been I rolled a one for these guys for movement rate. So, you know, that plus the, the leader... Um, the leader bonus wasn't going to get him very far. Could have probably been more aggressive with the Confederate cavalry, but once again stopped at the Duck River because we can't cross the fords uh, during during a late rain turn or late rain portion of a turn. And uh, Hatch here was going to try and slow them down and cut them off anyway. I, I am still uh, confused about a small handful of things here. Uh, the recovery mechanism, I'm not 100% certain on. Uh, I'd like to see... A, something more clear and distinct for all of the different circumstances with regard to exhausted, what I would call leaders. I look at this as a leader, but really it's a division, right? But you flip this guy over to the exhausted side. Uh, I think of that as a leader, it's not. But uh, this division can be exhausted and then the units can have fatigue. That The strength points, I look at giving the strength points the fatigue, but really it's this, right? So exhaustion, fatigue and demoralization and disorganization. There are four different things that kind of play into this and I'd like to understand more crisply how that works. And the second thing, um, which I now forget, I don't know. So it doesn't matter. So I think that was one, that was my primary issue. Um, may have been, uh, I, I had a little challenge with how late rain worked, but I finally worked that out. I just wasn't reading the rules clearly here. Um, the combat system is pretty straightforward. The movement is, you know, it's, it's interesting because you never know who's going to move and how far they're going to move. So you've got the double whammy going there. Um, I, a little, you know, a little suspect about the, I know it's a historical scenario, but a little suspect about the victory conditions because, you know, unless you get an extraordinary set of chip, uh, chip pulls or initiative rolls, and roll well for movement. I, there is no hope for that I can see for Lee uh, coming on with uh, the one other force that's on the board and doing any sort of damage in terms of trying to tackle what uh, was there's two factors here to start with. Uh, take on uh, Water's force here. I find that pretty incredulous uh, to for, for that to happen. Love to see it. Uh, so anyway, look. The cool thing about this system is I would imagine if I set this up and replay it, it will be completely different next time. So uh, that would be cool. Uh, in the meantime, we're going to rotate off. Uh, and I think what I'd like to do is try and get some vassal uh, play with somebody, uh, possibly live, but preferably uh, by play by email. Uh, but maybe just a conversation here and there so I can get uh, clarity on rules. So I've, uh, I've invited a couple of different folks to try and play with me. Uh, if they don't pick up the, the baton in the next uh, week or so, then I'll be looking for a player online. So if you're interested, pop a note in the, in the comments, uh, obviously US-based. Actually, if it's eat by email, I don't care where, where you are. So uh, be happy to uh, play knowing that I don't know the rules particularly well. So quick little look at this. Talk to you soon. Hope you enjoyed it. Ciao.